Hey Lashy Kids and Dragon Mutants, I'm Lady Shasha, mistress of the snark, connoisseur of the gore, and your hostess with the mostess. Since a brand new entry into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise has just been released, I decided I should go back and revisit the original franchise. Starting with the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've already seen this movie a few times in my life, but this will be the first time I've rewatched it within the last 10 years. The first time I ever saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I was 11 years old and I watched it with my grandmother and I remember being very, very disappointed that there wasn't an actual Chainsaw Massacre in the movie. Mind you, I watched this after I had already seen Halloween, a couple of Friday 13th movies, and I think the first two Nightmare on Elm Street movies on cable or on video. So for me, Leatherface didn't scare me as much as Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger. I've never been afraid of Jason, I'm just entertained by Jason. That said, re-watching this as an adult, I can appreciate so much more about this movie. I really like the opening with the gooey, decomposing corpse. That looked great. Along with the opening text scroll, the sound of the camera flash, and the radio voiceover, it just set the tone for this. In case you don't know, this is about some young adults traveling who pick up a strange hitchhiker and stumble upon a family of cannibals, including their imposing son, Leatherface. I really admire the technical aspects of this movie, so much so that I think that it is an insult when people do not give Toby Hooper his credit for Poltergeist. Yes, there's some aspects that are clearly influenced by Steven Spielberg, but I absolutely believe that Toby Hooper deserves some credit for directing Poltergeist. As I said earlier, rewatching this as an adult, I have a new appreciation for it. I also see a few things differently about it, like rethinking whether Leatherface is even a slasher. To be fair, he didn't start off going out to kill people. People kept walking their happy asses into his house, and from his perspective, they're the invaders. That said, he didn't have to kill them, and he did eventually go outside as Sally and Franklin were approaching his house. But I digress. There is a shot reverse shot scene in the van and I just thought about how hard that must have been to film with the size of film cameras they had back then. I really enjoy the nice wide shots that give you so much visual information about the area that they are in. Plus the color looked great. Blue skies, green fields, some even covered with sunflowers. This shot of this entranceway with the red wall and Leatherface first appearance with his skin mask and yellow smock is iconic. Despite how bright and colorful this is, and how many scenes were shot in broad daylight, there's still a grittiness to this. Dear new filmmakers, you don't have to mute the colors to make something look grimy. The nighttime scenes look great as well. Man, remember when horror filmmakers used to actually shoot scenes at night? Real night, not day for night. Day for night is when they shoot a scene in the daytime and then go back and use editing software to make it look as though it's nighttime. But it never actually ever looks like it's actually nighttime. Speaking of nighttime, there's some really fun jump scares during the night. Leatherface literally comes out of the darkness and it's a really effective jump scare. After all these years, I owe Franklin an apology. All this time I've been saying that he is more annoying than Shelly in Friday the 13th part three. I take it back, Shelly is way more annoying than Franklin could ever be. This also might be the very first slasher movie, and I use air quotes because I'm still not 100% convinced that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a slasher movie. I think it is a movie that has slasher elements, but I'm not quite sure whether I would call it a slasher movie. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you consider Texas Chainsaw Massacre to be a slasher movie or nah? Back to what I was saying. This might be the first slasher movie to have a character say, Quit playing games, guys. This also might be the first time a character jumped out of a second story window to get away. There are some unintentionally funny moments in this, like when old dude was hitting Sally with the broom, I cracked up at that. Or when they're trying to get grandpa to hit Sally in the head with the hammer, he just can't do it. I don't know if this is supposed to be funny, but it's pure comedy to me. Another note to new filmmakers, the runtime of this movie is 83 minutes. So edit that shit down unless you have a complex story that requires more time to tell. If you run out of story at the 75 to 85 minute mark, keep your movie that length. Let's talk about the star of the movie, Leatherface. You don't actually learn a whole lot about him as a character in this. But still, Gunnar Hansen did an excellent job with this really physically demanding role. The ending of this movie is pretty cool. It has some unexpected gore. I love the shot of Sally in the back of the pickup truck basically losing her mind. By the way, I think it was an excellent costuming choice to have Sally wear white bell bottoms. The blood shows up better. And that last shot of Leatherface chasing the truck and when he can't catch it doing his iconic chainsaw dance. How could you not love that? 
then immediately smash cut the black, that's how you end a movie. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the blueprint for a certain subgenre of gritty horror movies. Without the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there would be no Hills Have Eyes, no Wrong Turn, no Frontiers, no House of a Thousand Corpses. And without Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have no Saw. You get my point. At the time of this recording, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was available on Tubi with limited commercial interruption and also available on Shudder completely commercial free. The copy that I watched was on Shudder and it looked digitally remastered. This movie is a certified classic and I enjoyed it much more now as an adult than I ever did when I was a child. I just couldn't appreciate the nuances to this film until I saw it with a completely developed brain. And with that, I'll be back in a moment to talk about The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Welcome back, let's get into The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This was released a whopping 12 years after the original. And as the original was a snapshot of a moment in time in the 70s, this was a snapshot of a moment in time in the 80s. You can tell as much from the poster, which is a parody of The Breakfast Club. First of all, when I see that Canon logo, I immediately get nostalgic feelings. Because when I was growing up, when you saw that Canon logo, it meant you were in for a good time. Then I see that the makeup effects were done by Tom Savini, and I'm all in. Plus, this is also directed by Toby Hooper. I was very excited to see this, but then I found out that this is the only Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that is not available streaming. The only place I found it was on Amazon. There are DVD copies for around $8 and some change. I'm approaching this review as though this is a first time watch. I did see this um, on video sometime in the 90s, but I don't really have any memory of it. So I'm going to talk about it as though this is my first time watching it. As a matter of fact, the only thing that I remember about this movie is the coat hanger guy. The sequel starts with a text crawl recounting the events of the first movie. Then we see two rich college jerks driving around, shooting at signs and prank calling a radio station before a chainsaw wielding leather face riding on the back of a pickup truck rolls up on them. For some reason, his chainsaw is extra long this time and the blood and gore is turned up to 11. This is my kind of movie. The story then follows the radio DJ that they called and the police lieutenant who's following up on the deaths of the rich college car jerks. The DJ goes to cover a chili cook-off and the winner is a member of Leatherface's Sawyer family. He says the secret of his award-winning chili is not to skimp on the meat. The lieutenant tells the DJ to play the recording of the car jerks getting killed to get a reaction. Leatherface and Platehead show up to the radio station and tear it apart. Just like Sam Raimi made Evil Dead Part 2 way more campy than the original, Toby Hooper made The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 way more campy as well. I really, really love The Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn. This, not so much. It was boring and a bit annoying, and it didn't really suit my sense of humor. Your mileage may vary. Leatherface basically chases the DJ around while not killing her. His family acts weird, and the lieutenant also runs around acting weird for one hour and 40 plus minutes. I started playing games on my phone and surfing Twitter, I gotta admit it. Even the gore wasn't enough to hold my attention. The opening sequence was probably the best sequence. It feels like Toby Hooper just showed up to get a check. This feels like a literal cash grab. And a part of me feels like he purposely made it this bad so that they wouldn't ask him for more sequels. That didn't work. The mask looks alright compared to the original. Leatherface can walk through walls now. Shout out to Bill Johnson who plays Leatherface in this. I also feel like he was doing it for a check because in between the time that he made the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre and this, he made Poltergeist and he made Life Force. And those are excellent movies. I already spoke about the whole Spielberg-isms that are present in Poltergeist, but I still give Toby Hooper his credit. And Life Force is an excellent movie. The only thing that it was lacking was budget for the special effects. So to go from Life Force to this, I'm going to borrow a British expression, I feel like he was taking the piss. And it didn't work because we still got sequels afterwards if that was his intention. As I said, the gore looked great, but that was not enough to make me like this movie. Like I said earlier, at the time of this recording, this movie was not available streaming anywhere. You could purchase a copy of the DVD on Amazon for anywhere from $8.25 to around $8.50. So to recap, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974, certified classic. Love it for everything that it is, even though Leatherface is not my favorite slasher. And we'll go in the comments. I think I asked you guys in the comments if you consider Leatherface to be a slasher or not. 
because it kind of has some qualities of a slasher and it kind of doesn't. Y'all let me know. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, don't like it so much. It's just okay. But like I always say, don't take my word for it. Watch it for yourself. Just because I love something doesn't mean you won't hate it. And just because I hate something doesn't mean you won't love it. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2. Until next time, bye.